One day, a crocodile came out of the river and lay down near a rose apple tree. There was a monkey who lived on that rose apple tree. Who are you? I am a crocodile from a far off place searching for food. The monkey plucked a few rose apples and threw them down. The crocodile loved the rose apples and the monkey promised to give him some whenever he visited with him. They became very good friends and chatted a lot. The monkey also gave the crocodile rose apples to take home for his wife. rose apples to take home for his wife. I love these rose apples. I shall get you some more then. The monkey and the crocodile became very good friends. The crocodile's wife was jealous. She told him that they always killed monkeys and ate them. So, why was the crocodile friends with this monkey? The crocodile replied that he was such a good friend to both of them. The crocodile's wife wanted to eat the monkey, so she devised a plan. Why don't you invite your friend home so I can meet him? It is not possible. She kept getting greedier as every day went by. She wanted to eat the monkey. She decided to put her plan to work. I am ill and the doctor says that I will be well only if I eat a monkey's heart. How can I do that? He is my only friend and I cannot do him harm. She told him that he would find her dead when he came back from visiting with his friend the monkey. He had to bring her the monkey's heart. So the crocodile decided to save his wife's life. When he went to see his friend later that day, he invited the monkey to his home. But how can I come with you there? You live in water and I shall drown. We live on the riverbank and I shall take you there. He took the monkey on his back and he started to cross the river. As the water in the river got deeper, the monkey was scared. Don't take me any further or I shall die. I want to kill you and take your heart as a cure for my wife who is ill. The monkey started to think fast as he wanted to save himself. He needed to be clever and outwit the crocodile. I have left my heart in a hole in the rose apple tree. Is that so? Then let us go and fetch it. The crocodile swam back to the rose apple tree. The clever monkey jumped off the crocodile's back and climbed high up on the tree and refused to come down. Go back to your wife and tell her that her husband is the biggest fool in the whole world. There once lived a huge hungry lion in a vast jungle. All the animals were afraid of him because he would kill many of them every day for food. They had to find a way to stop him from killing all of them. After discussing among themselves, they went to the lion. Uh, uh, we have come to ask you to hear us. You are our king and every king needs subjects. 
If you eat us all, then you will not have any subjects left. We will send you an animal every day to your cave. This way, you will get food without hunting for it. The lion agreed to the plan. He threatened to kill all of them if they ever failed to provide him food. And from that day onwards, one animal was sent to the lion's cave every day. This plan seemed to work until it was the turn of the rabbits. A small, clever rabbit, when asked to go to the lion, wanted to save himself and the other animals. He made a plan. He went to the lion and on seeing him, the lion got angry. You are too small for my meal. I am going to teach the animals a lesson for cheating me. I shall kill them all. Oh, great king, you must not blame us. There are six rabbits sent for your meal, but another lion ate the other five up. A lion? Who is he? Where does he live? He was a big lion, and he wanted to eat me too. But I told him that you would eat him up for spoiling your meal. He told the lion that the other lion became furious and insisted that he was the bravest lion in the forest and that he was the only king in the jungle. He boasted that he would show this lion who the real king was. On hearing this, the lion was enraged. His roar shook the jungle. Roar! Take me to this fool! I shall have no peace! until I kill him. Yes, Master. You must show that other lion who the real king is. He led the big lion into the jungle. He took him to a deep well and pointed down the well, saying that the other lion lived down there. The lion looked into the well and saw his own reflection in the well. He thought it was the other lion. The lion got even more enraged and jumped into the well to attack the other lion. He hit the water in the well with a loud splash and drowned. The clever little rabbit returned home and retold his adventure. All the other animals in the jungle were happy that their greatest enemy was dead. You have been very clever, my little friend. Yes, and you have brought courage back into the jungle. Once upon a time, there lived a crane by the side of a tank full of fish. He ate the fish in the tank and lived a happy life. As years passed by, the crane grew old and weak, and he found it difficult to catch all the fish he wanted for his food. He was afraid that he would soon die of starvation. Then the crane thought of a plan. He stood sadly by the tank and did not try to catch even the fish that swam close by him. The fish, frogs and crabs in the tank noticed how unhappy he was. Why do you look so sad, uncle? Yes, why are you not catching fish as usual? I have got terrible news. The people are going to fill up the tank with mud and grow plants in it. And there would not be any fish for me to eat anymore. You are our friend and only you can save us. Could you please take us to the other tank? I am too old. 
and will need to make many trips. I would also need rest between trips. The fish agreed with a sigh of relief. The crane started making the trips. He took a few fish first, and instead of taking them to the other tank, he took them to a rock. He ate them, leaving their bones on the rock. He rested until he felt hungry again and went back to the tank to take a few more fish. He then proceeded to eat them. He kept visiting the tank as often as he was hungry. Now, among the fish still left in the tank, there was a big crab. He too went to the crane for help. Uncle, uncle, save me also from death. Ah, I would like to try crab meat for a change. Of course, my young friend. Come, I shall take you to the big tank. As the crane spread his wings and flew with the crab, the crab looked down, but he could not see the bigger, deeper tank. He could not see water anywhere. Uncle, where is the big tank to which you are taking me? <laughs> I am going to eat you up, just like I have eaten up all the other fish. The frightened crab looked down and he could see heaps of fish bones on a rock. He dug his sharp claws into the crane's neck. He dug them so deep that soon the crane was dead. The crab went back to his own tank and told the other fish what had happened. Thank you! You have saved us from that evil crane! And from that day, they lived happily ever after. Once there was a beautiful lake in a small village. Three big fishes lived in the lake. They were very close friends. All three of them were very different from one another. The first one believed in fate. He thought things cannot be changed and what was destined would definitely happen. The second one was intelligent. He thought he knew how to solve a problem if he had one. The third one was the wise one. He thought long and hard before acting. One day the wise fish was happily playing around in the water when he overheard two fishermen talking to each other. Hey, look, what a beautiful lake. How come? Surprising, we did not see this lake till now. Hey, look, there are big fishes in this lake. Let me throw the net. Don't be in a hurry. I'm tired now and it's already evening. Let's come tomorrow. The fisherman went home. The wise fish hurriedly swam to its friends and shared the news. Friends, I heard two fishermen talking. They will come tomorrow to catch all of us. Let us get out of this lake before the fishermen come back. A canal I know can take us to another lake. I know what to do if the fishermen come and catch me. Whatever has to happen will happen. I was born in this lake and I am not going to leave it. I don't want to take a risk. I will use this opportunity to get away from danger. The wise fish took the canal route and went to another lake.
the fishermen came back the next morning and cast their net. The other two fishes were caught along with many other fishes. Let me pretend I am dead. That is the only way to escape. It acted as if it was dead. Hey, this one is dead. Throw him out. The fisherman threw him along with other dead fish back into the lake. But the other fish, which believed in fate, was still jumping in the net. What is this? This one is jumping too much. Give him a blow. The fisherman struck it on its head and took it along. The moral is that one has to use one's intelligence to deal with the challenges of life. Blind belief in fate and idleness will only spell disaster. Once a washerman had a donkey. The donkey was old and thin. During the day, the donkey had to carry heavy loads of clothes. But at night, it was free to go as he liked. One night, the donkey met a jackal, and they became very good friends. Together, they wandered about searching for food. They found a garden full of ripe cucumbers and ate as many as they could. They did this night after night, and soon the donkey became fat and happy. One night, the donkey felt extremely happy after he had eaten. What a beautiful night! The moon is full and bright. I feel like singing. Yes, yes, you are happy. But is singing at this late hour really a good idea? Oh. <laughs> we are thieves and we will be caught if the farmer hears us. Please be quiet. Oh, I must sing. I simply must. <laughs> you must not sing. Besides, your voice is not very pleasant. You are jealous of my beautiful voice. <laughs> the farmers will hear you. And you may not like their reward. The donkey ignored and started to sing. And soon his braying got louder and louder. The jackal pleaded with him. But the donkey broke out into a new tune. The jackal decided to leave after warning the donkey for the last time. The donkey's braying got louder and louder, and soon the farmers heard him. They rushed out with their sticks. Sounds like the braying of a donkey. Let us give him a thorough thrashing. They fell upon the donkey and gave him a sound thrashing. They tied a heavy stone mortar round his neck. The donkey finally managed to escape. He dragged himself out of the garden and bumped into his friend the jackal, who was waiting there for him. I'm sorry that I did not listen to your words of advice. The jackal helped the poor donkey to remove the stone mortar from around his neck. And together, they went as far as their legs would carry them, far away from the farm. <laughs>